and have times where we're meeting up in these spaces and playing around. Thank you. All right. Cheers. Bye. Farewell. All right. All right. Welcome, Mal. This will be the final of the uh, presentation sessions in the symposium. This is Mal Aburasan with the presentation Shared Pretensions in Active Inference. So thank you, Mal, to you. And you're the first, you're the first to join with an AI steward slash guardian. <laughs> awesome. Shall I share my screen? Yes. Let's do, let's do, let's do. Advance just a second. I'm looking for a window. I think this will do. Okay, so can you see the screen? Yep, looks good. Thank you. Awesome. So unfortunately, I imagine that you are seeing the entire screen and not just the presentation i apologize about that oh, but i, I got it it's to. it's cropped i got it okay wonderful thank you all right so welcome to the presentation on shared potential under active inference we're going to cover a lot of topics um shall i introduce myself a little bit uh or have you already done that awesome so my name is Mawal Barassan. I'm a PhD student in cognitive computing. I work in active inference in the interaction between uh, social sciences, uh, philosophy, consciousness science, and uh, artificial intelligence. Um, we're going to start a presentation on protention, protection, and active inference. So I'm going to define a lot of terms. It's going to deal into um, philosoph philosophy terms that are very deep. Um, and uh, so let's get started. If you will just give me one small second. And we're back. So shared pretension is a term derived from phenomenology, and it refers to the shared anticipation of future events among a group of individuals. This philosophical study of experience and consciousness becomes particularly interesting when we consider it in the context of active inference. When we combine these two concepts, we get a powerful tool for understanding how groups of individuals can coordinate their actions and work towards a common goal. This is the main focus of the discussion today. So imagine a group of people uh, planning a trip. They all share a common goal to have a successful and enjoyable trip. The shared goal forms the basis of their shared potential. They all anticipate future events related to the trip, such as booking tickets, packing their bags, and visiting various attractions. As they start to take actions towards their goal, they're also engaging in active inference. They're making predictions about what will happen next, and then adjusting these predictions based on what actually happens. So, for example, they might predict that a certain flight will be the cheapest based on their past experiences. But when they actually check the prices, they find that another flight is cheaper. So they adjust their prediction and book the other flight. This constant cycle of prediction and adjustment guided by their shared protention helps the group coordinate their actions and make their trip a success. So we're going to delve deeper into the concepts and explore the role of past experiences known as retentions in shaping our current knowledge and future predictions. Explain, let's explain first the concept of retentions. Retention is a key component of time consciousness that retains the past trajectory of a temporal object. It's the preservation of the content of a now past hyaluronic datum in our present consciousness. A hyaluronic datum refers to the raw, uninterpreted sensations that arise in our consciousness. When we retain these data, we are essentially keeping a record 
of past sensations and experiences that can inform our present and our future actions. In active inference, we can formalize retention by thinking of moments as binning of states, which are bound to a hierarchical state. This way, retention is seen as the binning which becomes the current state, informing the next expected state. To further connect retention with active inference, we can consider the way in which retention plays a role in updating an agent's belief and generative model. The past experiences influence the current expectations and actions, thus shaping the agent's understanding of the world and the future. So let's consider a practical example to illustrate this concept. If you had a good experience at a particular restaurant, you might choose to go there again in the future. Your past experience influences your future decision. In Husserlian temporal phenomenology, we would think about much shorter time scale, but if we extend this concept, we can see a much larger structure wherein the retention is simply the past state. It's like having a mental note that says, this place is good, and this is how an example of retention works in your everyday life. They're not merely representation or memories, but presentations of a temporally extended present, which distinguishes them from recollections. This involves the presentation of some already constituted content in conscious experience. Retentions also play a crucial role in mapping past knowledge onto current beliefs, contributing, contributing to the development of shared narratives or goals that we will delve into in, in the rest of the presentation. They can be former now points and the current awareness of the past and far sedimented retentions can be engraved in scripts or deep temporal priors or more fluid deontic cues. This phenomenon corresponds to a specific application of message passing between agents in the present moment and in the sensorium. Retentions and protentions may also emerge jointly within a group, forming a collective understanding that transcends individual perspectives. Protentions, as we saw, refer to the anticipation of future events based on past experiences and current knowledge. It's thus forward-looking. It's the forward-looking counterpart to retention, which is backward-looking. Protention is the anticipation of future trajectories of a temporal object. It's the process of looking ahead, predicting what's to come, based on what, what has been and what currently is. So in active inference, it could be formalized by considering the future states that are expected based on the current state and past states. Protention is thus the anticipation guiding the next action. We can consider the way in which protention plays a role in updating an agent's beliefs and generative models, influencing the actions and thus shaping the agent's understanding of the world and the future. So for instance, if you see dark clouds in the sky, you might anticipate that it's going to rain and decide to carry an umbrella. This anticipation of future events is protention. It's also going to determine whether or not you're wet when you go outside and therefore whether or not you expect to be wet. Your brain is constantly making predictions about what's going to happen next. So let's put this in the context of temporal flow, which ties together those concepts of primal impressions and we will see retention and protention. Temporal flow is the structure that represents the continuous progression of time from the past through the present and into the future. Agents are constantly revising their generative models, and they do this by integrating the observations, which we could refer to here as primal impressions. This updating process is a balancing act between maintaining the predictive density of the agent's current beliefs and adapting to new information. Retentions and protentions structure time for a given agent, creating a framework that shapes their perception and anticipation. Different agents or systems will exhibit uh, varying qualities and quantities of retention and protention, which resembles something like Mike Levin's concept of cognitive light cones. So given the presence of retention, we can anticipate 
a potential horizon, not merely as an arbitrary expectation. Questions are thus the point at which agents' beliefs about the world are updated to match their current observations, which leads to a more accurate understanding of the environment and allows for more effective goal-directed behavior. Primal impressions are the fulfillment of a protention, which is the time-bound nexus of perception and existence. It is, it is resolved, uh, sorry, it is the resolved probability that redefines a local gradient. It's in primal impression that reality collapses. The primal impression is thus mo modeled as the essential Bayesian cognitive moment. It is the juxtaposition of prior beliefs or retentions with ongoing sensory information in an unfolding future-oriented present of retention. So now we have a description of temporal thickness from phenomenology, which is compatible with generative modeling and active inference agents. For Husserl, this flow of conscious experience is primarily made up of sensations that well up in a raw, uninterpreted form that we called earlier hyaletic data. So this data is the now phase of a temporal object. It is formatted according to the eidetic or cognitive laws of consciousness. This is specifically relative to inner time. We can understand how temporal, temporal flow structures, how agents are able to make choices, act to self-evidence, connect the passive structure with the active component of decision-making or goal pursuit. Individuals have drives and teleology insofar as they have preferences. These preferences are protented goals reached towards by what we would call potentially the fiat where the fiat constitute the will to act towards a desire. So the fulfillment of a pretension by fiat drives the agent towards a teleology across a trail set. In a retentional extension, more information is amassed. So the longer your retention, more information can be caught in a moment. As individuals amass enough information, they can then find a structure to the information which becomes a map rather than a territory and is computationally more efficient than the sum of all the information a must. This new state of information may lead individuals closer to a shared goal. The information a must turns into an emergent whole of the retention, which grabs focus at the present moment because it seems to bring signals to the model that the pretensional goal is closer and is computationally simpler to retain. So sharing of retentions and protentions among group members in a social context can facilitate coordination and the achievement of a shared goal. By aligning their beliefs about the past or retentions and expectations about the future or protentions, group members can better predict each other's actions and intentions. This allows them to work together more effectively. In some cases, group members may have retentions and protentions that align naturally due to common experiences or understanding, even without active communication. However, group members often actively communicate their retentions and protentions, aligning their beliefs and expectations through dialogue and interaction, thereby um, enhancing their ability to predict each other's actions and intentions. Retentions and protentions may also emerge jointly within the group, not confined to any individual agent's umwelt, forming a collective understanding that transcends individual perspectives. This complex interplay of individual and collective dynamics can be explored further in hierarchical generative models, encompassing resonant cognitive models, communication, and even joint emergence. The structure of time consciousness encapsulated in retention and protention thus plays a significant role in the emergence of shared potentials. As agents retain and process similar elements from their environment, they can co-compute shared potentials by mapping each other's cognitive pathways and building upon one another's trails. 
This process is formalized by Bayesian updating. Um, the relationship between the topology of protensions and the expectation gradient, as well as the role of retention in mapping past knowledge onto current beliefs, plays a role in the development of shared narratives and goals. We can use this to get a deeper insight into the processes that drive the emergence of collective behavior and the development of shared understanding among agents. There's no better way to do it than using active inference by extending generative models of individual agents to account for the beliefs and goals of other agents. This is akin to theory of mind. It enables them to anticipate and adapt to the actions of their peers by offloading to the group. So we discussed a little bit earlier shared goals. Potential goals are future-oriented objectives that individuals or groups strive to achieve. They're not just mere desires, but they're actively pursued through the act of will that we called earlier fiat. The fulfillment of a potential drives the agent towards a teleology, that trail set we discussed. The fulfillment of a prediction entails less surprise, and therefore the agent self-evidences by seeking to accurately predict their surroundings. Agents select the series of actions or policies which generate transitions between states that produce expected observations. So through the choice of policy, an individual can reach their protented goal by minimizing the expected free energy that a given policy affords them. This seems pretty sim central and simple in terms of active inference. So farther protentions are represented by the policies of longer time depth. In a hierarchical model, this corresponds to a policy tied to a higher level action in a slower time scale. The choice of policies driven by the expected free energy of that higher order policy or the entire multi-scale generative model is based on the agent's preferences allowing an agent to conduct goal-directed behaviors across temporal scales so this is where we can cash out um, jeff yoshimi's trail sets where agents assimilate actions into the anticipated continuity of objects in their surrounding world this dissimulation um, ensures a smoother understanding of the environment and helps agents adapt effectively. Near potentials act as the near present contextual proximity and the far potentials rely on passive synthesis of deontic cues, which are sedimented retentions in the environment. The preferences of the agents aligned by policies correspond to attracting sets, which in the socio-cognitive setting can be instantiated as narratives. Having shared narrative is a necessary aspect of any exchange between artifacts, people, institutions that have some kind of attracting set. Generalized synchrony, which we will discuss a little bit later as well. So a team working on a project has a potential goal to complete the project successfully. The shared narrative might be the project plan that guides their actions. It's like everyone in the team has a shared story about what they're trying to achieve and how they're going to do it. The relationship between current states and future observations is captured within the B matrix transitions. This matrix represents the probability of transitioning to a new state based on the current state. So the B matrix transition and the A matrix is utilized to determine which new observations is most likely to occur given the current state and potential transitions. In the Husserlian framework, the expectation gradient structure plays a crucial role in defining the depth and fulfillment of pretensions. This structure represents the varying degrees of certainty and confidence agents have in their predictions about future states. The topology, thus, is inter and the arrangement is interrelation. Oh, sorry, or <laughs> there is an interrelation between the pretensions or the arrangements of future and expectations, which is proportional to the expectation gradient. The higher the gradient, the more detailed and accurate the pretensions are likely to be. The potential horizon represents thus the static states of the expected futures of the temporal object, while the continuation horizon is the amalgamated trail of the temporal object. Potential and continuation horizons are carried in protensions, while the imminent horizon consists of the primal impressions. 
So agents can coordinate through co-construction, where agents or individuals interact and collaborate to build this shared understanding and shared goals. This process is deeply interconnected within a complex web where agents typically coexist with other agents or subjects. Forming a collective, often referred to as multi-agent groups, swarm ensembles or assemblage. By aligning their beliefs to the signal found within their niche, they can better adapt to the environment and develop a shared understanding of their surroundings. Sharing information with other agents is beneficial as it allows them to trust one another and pool their resources. This collaborative approach is preferable to a conflict-driven scenario in which every other agent is perceived as a potential source of risk and surprise. By sharing information, agents could collectively construct a more accurate representation of their environment, leading to more effective decision-making and action. Through these interactions, shared narratives and goals can emerge from a co-construction of the world and each agent's generative model. So these narratives and goals are the result of dynamic process that in fact can be mathematically modeled through the equations that we introduce in the paper that, is, that this presentation is based on, but that I will present a little bit later. They capture the process of mutual learning where agents adapt their generative model based on the information gathered from their interactions with others. Agents may start off with slightly or greatly divergent generative model. So in order to minimize surprise, there will be a natural alignment within a group as agents adapt to the evolving dynamics of their environment and social contexts. For example, again, consider this team working on the project. Even if you have your own understanding of the model or of the project, you'll interact and share information and learn from each other and then adapt the model. Over time, you'll develop a shared understanding of the project and a shared goal for its completion. This is an instance of co-construction. It's like building a house together where everyone contributes to the final structure. The emergence of shared narratives and the learning and recognition of them may be made more efficient through certain mechanisms, such as language. In an experiment uh, illustrated uh, in, in a paper uh, that um, Carl was on. Um, the two agents share the same sensorium, ask each other questions. I think it's a paper on 20 questions in Emma Holmes, um, with a shared narrative entailing a common language. This illustrates the marked efficiency and the minimization of free energy simply by having a shared language, a common ground. So shared potentials are common future anticipations or goals that emerge among groups of individuals through co-construction. It allows them to better anticipate each other's actions and intentions and work towards a common goal. It's strongly tied to the conscious efforts of individuals to work towards that goal and to effectively create an organizational structures where we're engaged in a conversation, in an exchange, assuming that this exchange is meant to align our generative models. So think of, for instance, the football team. Again, they have a shared pretension to win the match, they anticipate each other's moves and adapt their strategies based on the ongoing game. Everyone in the team has a shared vision of victory and they're constantly adjusting their actions to make it happen. So individuals infer each other's mental states by observing cues, which they can attribute to hidden causes. They use their own model of, or models that they have learned to recognize about others. This process is known as generalized synchrony entailing mutual predictability and can be interpreted as a collective minimization of free energy. In a group setting, individuals create cues in the world that direct other agents' attentions towards the same signals. Their models of the world align by sharing similar goals and similar environments and by reinforcing patterns of sampling reality. So we could, we could try to represent this through polynomials um, and morphisms. Each agent's interaction with the environment corresponds to a morphism, and the collective interaction of all agents can be represented as a polynomial. So a morphism, so if a polynomial P is defined, a uh, morphism between two polynomials P and Q consists of a pair of functions F and G, such that F maps P of 1 to Q of 1, and G maps P of I to Q of the quantity 1. This morphism must satisfy the commutativity requirements, meaning that the following diagram commutes um, P of 1 
uh, P of I maps to Q of the quantity I and P of one maps to Q of one. So we could see how we could create a framework to further explore the cooperative and competitive dynamics among agents. For multiple agents indexed by I with boundaries P and share environment boundary Q, their interaction can represent can be represented by a morphism of polynomials, which allows us to understand the shared potential in multi-agent systems and provides a foundation for further exploration of cooperative dynamics. We allow each agent to predict not only its own behavior, but also the behavior of its companions and the environment's response to their actions. So the dynamics of shared predictions are really useful here and can be properly cashed out um, mathematically through recursive cognition and prediction on the shared environment of the agent's actions and response to each other's actions. We can use sheep theoretic and topos theoretic approaches to understand multi-agent systems. A multi-agent system is a system where multiple individuals or entities interact. So for example, a traffic system can be considered a multi-agent system where different vehicles or interact. A topos is a category that has both spatial and logical structure, allowing for the expression of logical propositions and deductions within it. So we can use these approaches to construct a coherent understanding of the world from the perspective of multiple agents. The internal universe of agents, which can be seen as mathematical objects containing beliefs, perceptions, and predictions of individual agents, are represented using topoi. These internal universes provide a foundation for understanding and representing the complex interactions and shared understanding among multiple agents in this dynamic environment. We try to construct a consensus topos by patching together the internal universes or topoi of multiple agents. And the idea is to use the sheaf theoretic and topos theoretic structures to build a shared understanding. So we can thus derive the synchronization of goal-oriented actions among agents over time and leverage mathematical insights for category theory and generalized generative models. This connection is the mechanism through which the group synchronizes over time and ultimately achieves their objective. Agents within the system might possess varying levels of certainty in achieving the objective. Some may choose to expend less energy temporarily, decelerating their progress towards the desired outcome. This variation in certainty and approach leads to the emergence of different roles within a group, with some agents focusing on computational tasks while other monitor outcomes or engage in different actions themselves. The nested and distributed structure of generative models in active inference allows for the integration of both short-term and long-term goals. Agents with similar or compatible preferences can coordinate their actions by aligning their policies and working towards common narratives. So this alignment reduces the overall expected free energy of their joint actions, increasing the likelihood of achieving shared goals and facilitating the sharing of goals and expectations among group members. They can learn. Uh, which allows them to learn a central role in shaping uh, agents' preferences and strategies over time. Um, agents can gather new experiences and update their generative model. They refine their preferences and methods for achieving goals. Um, they can influence the formation and modification of shared narratives by having different perspective over different parts of a goal. Here, the, the concept of general life synchrony is manifested when all agents have learned compatible or harmonized aspects of the overall generative model. The synchronization is rooted in the retentional and potential dynamics of agents and can be more accurately described using mathematical models. So in conclusion, we tried to shed light on the concept of shared potential goals and multi-agent systems. We've emphasized the importance of understanding this concept as it plays a crucial role in the coordination and synchronization of agents' actions and intentions. We could in the future continuously highlight the role of cues in the environment and how they can be simple like marks on the road or more complex like symbols and language. The cues become carriers of passive synthesis, far pretensions and far retention and become ways to minimize free energy as they minimize the amount of any individual has to compute. It also allows us to delve into the concept of other evidencing in which the environment is in effect the self and others must learn to navigate um, in terms uh, navigate in terms of others and self. We've provided mathematical models to an equation to analyze the dynamics of shared potentials more accurately in terms of category theory. 
we've explored the dynamics of shared retentions and protention in hierarchical generative models, which reflect the complex interplay of individual and collective dynamics. We've encapsulated the structure of time consciousness and how that this allows agents to co-compute shared pretensions by mapping each other's cognitive pathways. So our approach basically begins an examination of Husserl temporal phenomenology integrated with the hierarchical active inference model, polynomial morphisms, and home polynomials. This enables recursive cognition and prediction of not only an agent's actions, but also the environment's response to these actions. So I think this comes to the end, Daniel. I think I'm literally at 30 minutes. Uh, thank you. Impeccable. Thank you, Mao. Yeah, great uh, presentation, awesome topic. So thank you for joining and looking forward to seeing how the work continues to develop. All right. Farewell, Mao. See you. This comes to the end, Daniel. I think I'm <laughs> Bye. Gonna... See you. Uh, thank All you. right. Okay. All right. The next session is going to be the final session of this symposium. It's been a really incredible journey, and I think.